Hey everyone, uh, we're not starting this yet, but I just want to make known to you the central area we lovingly call the mosh, sort mosh pit or snake pit. If you want to uh, get everything up close, even closer than you are now, this is it's a really good place to be. You're in the middle of, this, of the ensemble. So, uh, yeah. one thing I want to say, if you do come to the middle, and I encourage as many of you to come as you live here, um, Please do keep a low profile, like literally a low profile. Uh, like, yes. Great.
and on behalf of the Stanford Laptop Orchestra, Stork, uh, I'd all like to welcome you to Storktastic Chamber of Music 2014. If you're just coming in, please uh, feel free to a great time to find a seat. Um, the piece you just heard is a piece of cooking, and I think music and food uh, has, I think has long been likened to each other. I mean, what is music but food for the ears and the soul, and what is food and music for the stomach? And your taste buds. So I think this is a piece that brings us one step closer to some kind of a merging of these two already very linked concepts. Um, at the same time, I think computer music has really been often uh, linked to not so much food but cooking. Um, there's always been this, you know, this, this thought of a, a sound kitchen. You know, the thought is that yeah, you can have a delicious dish that you can eat. But isn't it more fun if you go in the kitchen and play with the raw ingredients and materials and actually make your own dish? So that's very much in the vein of how uh, the laptop workshop actually functions. And that all the pieces here tonight are actually going to be performed on instruments that have been created by members of the ensemble. We build them out of laptops, software, sound synthesis, signal processing, gestures, interactions, um, and. Uh, and a healthy dose of, uh, I would say, paying attention to the aesthetics of performing with a laptop. So those are the ingredients for tonight's concert. Um, so a uh, couple of things. Um, we usually, sometimes we have mobile phones involved in our performance. We actually do not tonight. But uh, we always feel a little hypocritical to ask you to turn those off. But I'm going to go ahead and do that now. If you, if you would, turn off your phones. And number two, dancing is encouraged. <laughs> I won't tell you when, but I think you'll know. Because if you feel like dancing, it's probably like a good time to dance. So, just saying. Thirdly, um, if you picked up a program note uh, with a consent form on the front, first I'd like to thank you in taking part in research that's happening here at this very center. And uh, secondly, if you do that, we're, we encourage you, actually, we would like to ask you to actually read the program notes uh, before you listen to each of the pieces. And after, there are basically three pieces, we're going to remind you to actually fill out a survey that's actually associated with that piece. Um, but for all of you, uh, you know, we put a lot of work into these pieces as well as thinking about how to represent them in program note form, so I encourage all of you to read the program notes. And finally, if you did pick up a consent form, um, please remember on your way out after the concert to meet up with Madeline. She's right there, waving. And if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask her after the concert. Madeline, anything else to, to add? Yeah, I would even have, have a writing utensil. Get your pens outside and have you to distribute what you want one. Anyone need a pen? This is the time to get a pen. Okay, I'll right. <laughs> <laughs> How are you guys doing? Are you ready to go? All right. Um, give us just a few moments to get the program notes sorted out, but in the meantime, um, I feel like this is actually a good time. If any of you come with questions, I'm not saying I'm going to answer any of them, if any of you questions about the laptop orchestra, this is actually a good time to just yell them out. So, any questions about Slurk? Why uh, did you get so cool? Why did you get so cool? I have no idea. You know, as T-Pain says, you know, don't do it because it's cool, do it because you're cool. And uh, I have no idea. <laughs> so, any other questions? I like this line of questioning. Alright, well, if you do have questions, we will need to transition from piece to piece. Uh, so those are actually a good time to, uh, to yell at that. This is electronic chamber music. That's the way we like to think of it. So it's meant to be up close and personal. So it's really a dialogue. So if you have anything you're wondering about or a comment you want to make, uh, you know, you know, not, and uh, we'll do our best to, to answer. Actually, all the pieces involve some form of Chuck. And Chuck, for those of you who don't know, Chuck is a programming language for computer music, sound synthesis, as well as mapping gestures. <coughs> To the sound. <coughs> um, any other questions? What? 
Next piece is March of the Thunder Gods.
exodus of some or all of us towards the direction of the nut house. <laughs> I'm just saying. Just saying. Yeah. How much of the sound is generated from the laptops versus dedicated hardware? Um, all of the sounds are actually generated in software. Software. Either synthesized or they're process sounds. Uh, process sounds and recorded sounds. Most of it's actually synthesized.
shout out to a co-director, Spencer Salazar, who's been working for <laughs> since early this morning. And he has uh, not only been running rehearsals, but also teching, being set up, networking, the lighting, and also uh, established the pattern of chairs in which you were sitting in. <laughs> so he pretty much did it all.
do we have any restrictions or conventions or sets that we use in the lack of orchestra? Um, we generally don't have any restrictions, uh, but we do seek to try to take advantage of the laptop and what it has to offer. And part of that is the programmability of the computer. So um, the instruments we have really, we try to benefit from that. We actually create our own gestures, uh, mapping from gestures to sound. We create our own synthesis usually. So the synths um, are most of the time built out of pretty basic elements of you know, oscillators, filters, envelopes, noise generators, and things like that. Yeah. Um, and we do a fair amount of processing of pre-recorded sound as well. Yeah. Um, but nothing's quite out of the question. So if, if, if there's a compelling use for the computer in some musically meaningful way, yeah, uh, we're willing to give it a try. Yeah. Yeah. Great question. Yeah. 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 By the way, this is another one of these pieces uh, that, for those of you taking the survey, uh, please read the program notes <laughs> before. <Thank you. laughs> for those of you that have been to store concerts before, you you might notice a pattern that the amount of information you uh, you may learn from the laptop orchestra varies proportionally to the uh, amount of technical difficulties we encounter. Um, hopefully, I won't be giving you too much more information about the ensemble. <laughs> 
<laughs> By the way, I'm just setting up a uh, setting up part of a server for our next piece. We haven't quite got to the technical difficulties yet. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> FYI. And I'm going to full screen this terminal for your nerdy viewing pleasure. With my green text on black screens.
and then make music with them. We also conduct experiments on you uh, with the music. Um, I guess at, if by this point we have not completely deterred you from laptop orchestra and computer music, we'd like to invite you to the next laptop orchestra concert, which would be at the Bean Concert Hall on May 31st. And that's going to be, I believe, at 8 p.m. at Bean. And we will feature the full ensemble, <coughs> excuse me, 15 laptops, uh, hemispherical speaker arrays, and, uh, and all our ensemble members. Some pieces crafted especially for, um, for the full orchestra. So uh, I'd like to invite all of you to attend. Um, this would be our last piece of the evening. Um, does anyone have any outstanding questions, com complaints, rants? Something you need to get off of your chest as we... Uh, question. Yes. Uh, tell us a little more about that device that, that has the, uh, the strings. And is that this something that, that you designed? That you designed oh no. That? This is a this is a game track. This is actually was a commercially available game, gaming interface. Uh, um, so originally this is uh, was designed as a golfing controller. These two tethered gloves actually track in real time the locations of your two hands in 3D space. And it shows up basically as a dual axis joystick. And the idea is that you're supposed to track your swing. And uh, this turned out to be, as a golfing controller, a, a spectacular commercial failure. At which point they slashed prices to like $10. At which point computer musicians found it and said, this is a really inexpensive and wonderful uh, thing to experiment with, to build instrument out of. So, uh, and that's kind of what we've done. We've actually been making. I don't know, how many, how many different instruments have we made with the game track, would you say? 
Uh, we have some folks and lums with us tonight. Well, Nick, Mike. We might have used, I mean, like, what do we use? A pen and one instrument? Yeah. yeah, in fact, uh, Mike and Nick once did an instrument called Barrel. It was called Barrel because eight of these were actually duct taped to the side of a metal barrel. And it was played by eight people as Mike stood on top of the barrel to conduct them. And then Nick had his own game track off to the side and he was soloing over, the, uh, over this kind of octopus-like collaborative auto heart. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's so yes, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Game track, it may still be available. It's like $10. <laughs> I don't know why I'm trying to sell this product. Except it's really great. We <laughs> threw in a lot of free gloves when we got 40 of them. Yes, we've got more than 40 after the week. So initially we got 40. And they sent us 40, and then they sent us, without us asking, two extra giant boxes of gloves. <laughs> and then we order like 100. But I think they, we got more than we, basically we, been, we keep getting more than we asked for. <laughs> I think people are trying to get rid of inventory, so. I, I, we wholeheartedly endorse this product that is now completely out of business. Um, any other questions? No questions, no complaints. Oh, I see. Thumbs up. Okay. The moment is at the class. I have a strange desire to tell you guys more about the ensemble. <laughs> 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 the nut house is located. <laughs> the nut house is located on the California Avenue, next to that Starbucks and that tandoori oven and the counter. If you know any of those places, the nut house is really close. Oh, nice. that's